next on the Gospel Bill Show. It's a telegram from the sheriff in Dripping Springs. <clears throat> well, seeing as how I am the deputy in charge, I reckon I'll read it. <laughs> to Sheriff Gospel Bill, or Dave, Crusher Crane has just left Dripping Springs and is headed towards Dry Gulch. Well, Nick, you've been a good friend. I surely am gonna miss you. I got a pack. Did you say Crusher Crane? Yeah, Crusher Crane. Nicodemus, you're dead meat. Mm -hmm. ah! It's the Gospel Bill Show, featuring Gospel Bill, his sidekick, Nicodemus, Miss Lana, good old Elmer Barnes, and the entire Dry Gulch Gang. Hey, GB, work come you's a looking for me. Yeah, Nicodemus, listen, I need you to watch Dry Gulch for the next couple of days. Well, you know I'd be glad to help you any way I could. Where you headed? Well, you've heard of that outlaw, Crusher Crane. Crusher Crane? Why, he's the meanest outlaw in the country, and the biggest. Yeah, you can say that again. Well, he's been causing all kinds of trouble down in the southwest part of the county, and I've got to ride down there and see if I can catch him, Nicodemus. Oh, Gospel Bill, now you be careful with Crusher Crane. Why, if he gets a hold of you, you're dead meat. Well, don't you worry about that. I aim to watch my step around that rascal. Here's your badge, and I don't ordinarily do this, Nicodemus, but since it's Crusher Crane, I think you ought to wear that pistol down that bottom drawer. Oh, 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 thank you, Gospel Bill, a whole bunch. Well, that'll make me feel better with Crusher Crane around. See you later, Nick. <clears throat> oh, oh, Mr. Tutwater, uh, did you notice anything? No, I hadn't noticed anything. Why? Uh, you sure your glasses are clean? My glasses are always clean. Nick, did you want to say something to me? Well, Tutwater, since you didn't notice, I just thought you might like to know that Gospel Bill's left town to go to Alkali Flats for a few days, and uh, he put me in charge, so if any problems come up, I'm the man you need to see. Oh, that's just wonderful. You know, I'm going to have to talk to the town council about this. On any number of occasions, I've instructed him that if he's got to go out of town, to leave someone responsible in charge, not some simpleton Harry Hayseed. Well, that just shows you who the simpleton is. My name ain't Harry Hayseed, it's Nicodemus. Oh, oh, that's good. Well, let me tell you something. I'd feel more secure if my grandmother was in charge. Tutwater, I am perfectly capable of handling any kind of problem that could come through this town. You don't need to worry. I can handle it. Oh, well, I'm going to go back to my bank right now and make sure all my security devices are in perfect working order. Good day. Just remember, Tutwater, you're in good hands. Nicodemus, Nicodemus, hurry, go get Gospel Bill. It's bad news. Well, I, well, I can't go get Gospel Bill, Miss Lenny. He ain't here. He had to go to Alkali Flats to look for Crusher Crane. Well, who's in charge then? Well, you're looking at him. Uh, oh, well, then you better be the one to come in here. Hurry up, Nicodemus. This is serious. What's going on? It's bad news. Come on. Okay, little lady. Be right there. It's a telegram from the sheriff in Dripping Springs. <clears throat> well, seeing as how I am the deputy in charge, I reckon I ought to read it. To Sheriff Gospel Bill, or his deputy, Crusher Crane has just left Dripping Springs and is headed towards Dry Gulch. We will be rebuilding the town for the next several months. Be advised that he is a bit cranky and that he is dangerous. P.S. Dangerous is an understatement. Sheriff of Dripping Springs. Oh, Miss Landon, did you hear that? Crusher Crane is headed towards Dry Gulch. He is the meanest, the orneriest, and might I add, largest outlaw in this whole territory. I mean, Crusher Crane is an ex-world champion wrestler. He's so strong, he can pin five men with just one arm. And that's while he's resting. And Gospel Bill's on his way to Alkali Flats, and, and there's no way we can reach him. Oh, Miss Lana. 
I pity the poor man that's gonna have to stand up face to face, eyeball to eyeball to crush your crane when he gets here. Reckon who it's gonna be? Nicodemus. Huh? I know who's gonna face crush your crane. You do who? You. Me? What are you talking about? Well, Gospel Bill left you in charge. Well, yeah, I know he left me in charge, but I'm in charge of things like double parked horses and, and, and vagrants and, and making sure the ice cream parlor runs good. Not, not running down desperate desperados like Crusher Crane. Now, Gospel Bill left you in charge, and he believes in you. And besides that, if God be for you, who can be against you? Well, Miss Lana, I know that scripture's in the Bible and all, but I gotta face Crusher Crane. I gotta have some reinforcements. Uh, I'll see you later. Oh, hey, Elmer. Hey, Nick. Ooh, what's that? Gospel Bill made you a deputy? <laughs> How many bad guys you shot? <laughs> Cut it out, Elmer. Being a lawman is serious business. Gospel Bill had to go up to Alkali Flats for a few days looking for Crusher Crane. He left me in charge. The only thing is, we just heard that Crusher Crane is headed right here for Dry Gulch, and I gotta be the yahoo that faces up to him. You gotta face Crusher Crane? Yeah. Ooh, I heard he's eight foot tall and 500 pounds. Really? Yeah. I even seen him in a wrestling magazine. He's got what they call the Crusher Grip. Squeezes your head till your eyeballs pop out. Pop plum out? Pop plum out. Oh. Nicodemus, you're dead meat. If I was you, I'd leave town right now before you lose your eyeballs. No, I ain't leaving town. Gospel Bill entrusted me and left me in charge, and I ain't skipping out. I'm gonna face this thing. I don't know how I'm gonna do it, but I'm gonna face up to it. Well, Nick, you've been a good friend. I surely am gonna miss you. I got a pack. What am I gonna do? I can't let Crusher get me. I don't want my eyeballs popped out. Not plumb out anyway. I know what I'll do. I'll lock myself inside this here jail and I'll swallow the keys. I... No, that won't work. Crusher's so big, he'll tear the whole jailhouse down. What am I gonna do? I can't let Gospel Bill down. What would he do in this situation? I, I, I need some friends to help me. Yeah, I, I need me some deputies. Yeah, that's what I need. Yeah, we're not whipped yet. Nicodemus. To the rescue. Hey, Luke, how's it going? Oh, just fine, Nick. Trying to straighten up the place a little bit. That's looking real good. Uh, you know, Luke Gospel Bill had to leave town when he left me in charge, and it seems like there's this itsy bitsy, teeny weeny little outlaw coming into town. Oh, I'm sure I could handle him all by myself, but. Uh, you know how Gospel Bill is about regulations, and he's a stickler for details, wants me to have a backup. And, well, I know Jews interested in detective work and all. You take all them magazines from back east, and I thought you might want to help me out on this one. Oh, Nick, I'd love to. I've been dying for a chance like this. By the way, what's the name of this fellow anyway? Oh, his name is, uh, Crusher Crane. Oh, uh, what'd you say, Nick? Uh, his name's Crusher Crane. Did you say Crusher Crane? Yeah, Crusher Crane. The Crusher Crane? Yeah. He stands 12 feet tall, weighs 900 pounds? No, he don't. Neither. He just stands 8 foot tall and weighs 500 pounds. Well, I heard he could take a man's arms, tie him in a square knot so tight that it'd take all the rangers in this territory to untie it. Really? Really. Nicodemus, you're dead meat. Oh. I'll tell you what. You take on Crusher Crane, and I'll take care of your funeral arrangements. <laughs> Well, can I take that to mean that you'll help me then? Well, he's probably got something else to do. Uh, hey, Mr. Tutwater. What is it, Nicodemus? Uh, Mr. Tutwater, I need your help for a little project I got going. Nicodemus, can't you see that I'm busy checking the security of my bank because of the slipshod law enforcement there is? Now listen, if you want to play lawman, you go bother someone else. 
But, Mr. Tutwater, there's this certain, certain individual coming into town, and, uh, well, I thought maybe you could help me form a welcoming committee for him. Yeah. Listen, I just told you I was busy. Ah, uh, but then again, what is this person's name? I mean, might he have some money? Well, I know he's been in a lot of banks. Uh, uh, his name is, uh, Crusher Crane. Crusher Crane? I just read an article about this guy. They say he's as big as a barn. It even said that someone didn't answer their door in time when he knocked, and he ripped the house off the foundations and threw it into a field next door. Really? Yeah. Well, does that mean you won't help me? No, I'm not going to help you. The only person I'm going to help is me, and I'm going to go close my bank and get out of town while I can. Oh, listen, Nicodemus, a little friendly piece of advice. If you see him, take off the badge, or you're going to be dead meat. <laughs> I just gotta find somebody to help me. I can't let Gospel Bill down. <laughs> hey, Jethro. Hey, Nick. How's life on the farm? Well, it's a living. Yeah, I guess things get pretty boring out there sometimes, don't they? Yeah, pretty boring. Milking the cows and slopping the pigs day after day after day. Say, uh, Jethro, you ever long for a little more excitement in your life? Now, I did some exciting one day, did it all different. Went out there and I milked the pigs and slopped the cows. But it wasn't really that much fun. No, Jethro, I'm talking about some real excitement. Yeah, what? Well, Jethro, I'm talking about spies, secret agents, espionage, undercover work, official type work. Yeah, what I gotta do? Well, Jethro, this is your lucky day. See, Gospel Bill left town. He left me in charge. And there's this outlaw coming in, and I need you to help me catch him. Outlaw, huh? What's this outlaw's name? Uh, Crusher Crane. Crusher Crane? Nicodemus? I heard he's 15 feet tall and weighs 1,200 pounds. No, he ain't neither. He's only 12 foot tall and weighs 900 pounds. And besides that, I heard he slapped a man so hard it took him a week to find him. No, he ain't that tough. Farm is hard, but at least I know I'm going to be living the next day. I'm going to go milk some pigs. By the way, you're dead meat. Maybe all these fellers are right. Maybe I don't have no business facing Crusher Crane myself. <laughs> what in the world am I going to do? Whatever give me the notion I could fight a big time outlaw like Crusher Crane. He's gonna turn me into dead meat. Nicodemus, is Crusher Crane in town yet? No, oh, cut it out, <laughs> Elmer. Guess not, so you still got your eyeballs. <laughs> Elmer, that ain't funny. Oh, I know. But you know what else I heard about Crusher? No. One time he punched his own mama right in the mouth. His own mama? Uh-huh. Of course, stories told she started the fight. And then there's this other time. He took two lawmen, just like you. Mm -hmm. Squeezed them together so tight, they became the first unborn to sign these twins. Oh, oh, I gotta go somewhere, Elmer. I gotta go think. I gotta go out to the ranch, uh, to the barn. Uh, I'll see you later. Chicken liver? <laughs> I just knew he'd leave town. What am I doing in here? I better get out of here myself. I gotta find some place to hide. Siamese twins whooping up on his mama. Can I get in there? Oh, I'm big enough. Oh man, I still got a lot of life to live. I'm not ready to die this young, this good looking. I gotta get married to Trudy Lou. We gotta have kids and grandkids. I wanna see Gospel Bill again. Oh, oh. Miss Lana, Miss Lana, it's terrible. It's just terrible. I've never seen it this bad. You need to shut your store down, lock your doors, take all your goods, and head for the hills before it's too late. Crusher Crane's coming to town. Well, I know that. And when Crusher Crane gets here, you knew that? Well, sure, I took the telegram. Well, aren't you scared? Well, no, Nicodemus is going to take care of it. Oh, Nicodemus, that chicken liver, I saw him flee in town. Now, Gospel Bill gave him a job to do, and he's going to do it. And with God's help, he's going to be victorious even over Crusher Crane. Miss Lana, we're talking about Nicodemus, not Gospel Bill. I know that. Now, which way did you see him go? Well, I saw him headed towards the barn. I'm going to go over to that barn, and I'm going to build him up and encourage him in the Word of God. He can do it. 
Well, Selena, I don't think you should. I really don't think you should go out there. But Crusher Crane's coming to town. One time he threw a man 25 feet up in the air, and he never did come down. Oh, no. Nicodemus, are you in here? No! Well, then who is that? Uh, nobody! Nicodemus, what are you doing hiding behind that bale of hay? Uh, uh, well, I'm not really uh, hiding back here, Miss Lena. I'm just kind of uh, back here thinking, you know, meditating. Yeah, uh, uh, meditating, that's what I'm doing. Well, it seems to me like you need to be meditating on the Word of God. Uh, Miss Lena, you don't understand. Crusher Crane's coming to town. Why, he's whipped a whole lot of lawmen a whole lot tougher than me. No, it's you that don't understand. Well, don't you know if God be for you, who can be against you? But, Miss Lana, this is Crusher Crane. I know who it is, but there's someone bigger and someone greater than Crusher Crane. Well, who could that be? Well, it's God. Well, Ooh. greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. <laughs> Nicodemus, you're going to have to come out from behind that bell of hay and start speaking and acting on the Word of God. Uh, well, I, I know you're right, Miss Lena. Uh, all right, greater is he that's in me. That, what's the rest of that? Than he that's in the world. Than, than he that's in the world. Uh, I'll tell you what, let's me and you go back to town and you keep telling me them scriptures, okay? Okay. Okay, what's and, the name? And if God be for me. God be for me. Who can be, who can against, be against me? me? Don't be afraid. No. And remember your scripture. Remember. Greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. Greater. And if God be for you, who can be against if you? If God be for me, who can be against me? I got it, Miss Lena. You better get inside. This ain't no place for a lady. I'll face Crusher Crane alone. Hey, cowboy! Uh, uh, Crusher Crane, uh, I've heard so much about you. Oh, bad, I hope! Uh, as a matter of fact, it was. Good. Are you the law in this town? Uh, most of the time, no. But uh, today, uh, yeah, yes, I am. Then do you want to die by the gun or by the knife? Uh, well, uh, I ain't too good with guns, and I don't even have a knife. Then we wrestle! Ah! Ah! gonna kill me. What am I gonna do? I don't need to be talking like this. I need to use God's word. I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. Greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. If God be for me, who can be against me? If God be for me, who can be against me? Hey, a book. A book. I got an idea. <laughs> I did it! So there we were, Miss Lana. I'm running for all I'm worth, and Crusher Crane is hot on my trail. So I duck into the jail and hide behind the door. And all the time, I'm quoting that scripture. If God be for me, who can be against me? If God be for me, who can be against me? And then I got the wisdom of God, and I spotted it. A book! You took time out to read a book? Oh, I didn't take time out to read a book. I, I went and grabbed a book off the shelf, the biggest book I could find, and I went back, hid behind the door, and then he sticks his old ugly head in, and blam oh, I let him have it, and he turned to jelly. And now he's in custody. Well, good afternoon, Lana. Nick? Cut. 
Listen, I thought I'd just stop by and congratulate you for apprehending old Crusher Crane. Well, thank you, Mr. Tutwater. I know this outward appearance may look rather simple. Yeah. <clears throat> but inside this facade beats the heart of a lean, mean, fighting machine that upholds every letter of the law when called upon. Of course, if it hadn't been for God's word, that guy would have killed me. Well, I don't know about that, but I do know that I just came over here because I needed to tell you that, uh, well, that I was, uh, sorry, for uh, doubting your abilities. Wait a minute. Miss Lane, did you hear that? Tutwater, did you actually say the word sorry? Look at Nick. Don't push it. Now, if you didn't hear it the first time, that's not my problem. Now I do have more important things to do. Good day. right now. If God be for you, who can be against you? It doesn't matter how great or tall your enemy is. If God's on your side, you cannot lose. David was just a 17-year-old kid. He only came up to Goliath's chest, maybe not even his waist. But I want to tell you something. David was a whole lot bigger than Goliath because of the God that he served. You see, all kinds of problems come against you that may seem so big that you'll never be able to whip them. But with God on your side, you can whip any kind of problem that you face. Just as David beat old Goliath, you can beat your problems. But you have to believe that God wants to help you, and He does. Now, I want to tell you right now three very important things that will help you to know that God wants you to win every battle that you face. All right, number one, God is on your side. You have to believe that. God's on your side, and He wants you to win. Number two, you have to understand that God has all kinds of power, all the power that there is, and that there's nothing that's too hard for God to do. And number three, you have to understand that God's power goes to work when you believe in it. See, God has all kinds of power, but it can't help you till you believe it. So you need to believe that God's power is working for you. When you face those dangers and troubles that, that are so great that they scare you, you say, if God be for me, who can be against me? And just like old David whipped Goliath, 
you'll be able to whip that problem that's come against you, no matter how big it is. Your dead meat.